the day spring from on high hath visited us to give light unto them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. Dayspring is an effort to be in touch with good people who love God and who believe that the Bible is His Word. Dayspring is brought to you by your neighbors from churches of Christ in this area. And now, visit with us as we draw near to God. The Lord has been good to us, and one of the great blessings He sent our way is this opportunity to sit down with friends and read the Bible together, and then think about what it says. Today we have a passage submitted to us by a viewer for our consideration. We sometimes refer to it as a favorite passage. Well, this passage may not be exactly a favorite passage, but it is a passage whose meaning the viewer would like to know more about. So the passage has been submitted to us, and we will focus our attention on it today. You know already that you can submit passages of Scripture to us. Many of you are so good to do that. We enjoy receiving passages of Scripture from our viewers, and we do our best to use every one of them on one special day a week when we take a passage from among our viewers and use that as the theme of our Dayspring telecast. There's a toll-free phone number for your use. There's also a post office box for your use. And you may know some other way to be in touch. Take advantage of whatever way you know to send me a passage of Scripture you'd like to be the basis for our thoughts. Now I'm reading to you from Exodus chapter 21. There are two verses in that chapter about which our viewer has asked. Verse 22 and verse 23 in Exodus chapter 21. The passage reads like this. In Exodus chapter 21, uh, verse 22, If men strive and hurt a woman with child, so that her fruit depart from her, and yet no mischief follow, he shall be surely punished according as the woman's husband will lay upon him. And he shall pay as the judges determine. And if any mischief follow, then thou shalt give life for life, eye for eye, tooth for tooth, hand for hand, foot for foot, burning for burning, wound for wound, stripe for stripe. There's that reading, Exodus 21, verses 22 through 25. A good passage. Let me read that same passage to you out of the New King James Version. It perhaps will make it easier for us to grasp that language. Verse 22 in Exodus chapter 21, if men fight, we have some men who are in a fight, and hurt a woman with child. One of those men has done harm to this woman who is expecting a child, so that she gives birth prematurely. 
yet no harm follows. He shall surely be punished accordingly as the woman's husband imposes on him. And he shall pay as the judges determine. But if any harm follow, then you shall give life for life, eye for eye, tooth for tooth, hand for hand, foot for foot, burn for burn, wound for wound, stripe for stripe. Men are in a fight. One of those men does harm to a woman standing nearby. The woman is expecting a child. The result of that encounter is that the woman gives birth prematurely, prematurely to her child. And uh, the question is, how shall that case be carried out? The woman's husband shall say, here is, the, here is the loss we have suffered. And then the judges in a court of law will determine what amount of money or what other penalty will be imposed on the guilty party. And if bad things happen as the result of that encounter, and perhaps the woman dies, or her child dies, or both die, then the rule given is life for life. The person who caused that damage will pay in kind. If that person causes an eye to be put out, he shall lose an eye. If he causes a tooth to be knocked out, he shall lose a tooth, and so that is. To see that passage so as to understand it, it's necessary for us to see it against the background of a judicial system. And so I turn back a few pages in Exodus to chapter 18. In Exodus chapter 18, I shall begin reading at verse 30, or verse 13, where the Bible says, It came to pass on the morrow that Moses sat to judge his people. And the people stood by Moses from the morning unto the evening, a long line waiting to see Moses. And when Moses' father-in-law saw all that he did to the people, he said, What is this thing thou doest to the people? Why sittest thou thyself alone, and all the people stand by thee from morning to even? Moses said to his father-in-law, Because the people come unto me to inquire of God. When they have a matter, they come unto me, and I judge between one and the other, and I do make them know the statutes of God and his laws. And Moses' father-in-law said unto him, The thing that thou doest is not good. Thou wilt surely wear away both thou and this people that is with thee, for this thing is too heavy for thee. Thou art not able to perform it thyself alone. Hearken now unto my voice. I will give thee counsel, and God shall be with thee. Be thou for the people to Godward, that thou mayest bring the causes unto God. And thou shalt teach them ordinances and laws, and shalt show them the way wherein they uh, should walk, and the work that they must do. <clears throat> Moreover, <clears throat> thou shalt provide out of all the people able men, such as fear God, men of truth, hating covetousness, and place such over them to be rulers of thousands, rulers of hundreds, rulers of fifties, and rulers of tens. And let them judge the people at all season. 
and it shall be that every great matter they shall bring unto thee, but every small matter they shall judge. So shall it be easier for thyself, and they shall bear the burden with thee. If thou shalt do this thing, and God command thee so, then thou shalt be able to endure, and all this people shall also go their place in peace. So Moses hearkened to the voice of his father-in-law, and did all that he said. And Moses chose able men out of all Israel, and made them heads over the people, rulers of thousands, rulers of hundreds, rulers of fifties, and rulers of tens. And they judged the people at all seasons. The hard cases they brought to Moses, but every small matter they judged themselves. There is the beginning, I suppose we could say, of a justice system among the people of Israel. As they were in the process of becoming a nation, it was necessary that they have a judicial system to settle disputes among the people. At this time, there were perhaps as many as two million of them. And Moses was trying to perform that duty for all of them, an impossibility. Jethro, his father-in-law, said, You must delegate some of your authority to other men who are honest, able, and free from covetousness, who are fair-minded, and let them help you. So there is this background a judicial system for settling disputes. I turn over to Deuteronomy. In Deuteronomy chapter 16, verse 18, later in the law of Moses, here's what said, Judges and officers shalt thou make thee in all thy gates in every town which the Lord thy God giveth thee throughout, throughout thy tribes, and they shall judge the people with just judgment. Thou shalt not rest judgment. Thou shalt not respect persons, neither take a gift, for a gift doth blind the eyes of the wise and pervert the words of the righteous. Now later God told Moses, You select able, honest people, who shall sit over your people as judges and let them judge in all fairness. That judicial system is in the process of being formed. Now let me read a passage from the book of Numbers. In Numbers 35, something interesting is said. Verse 29, So these things shall be for a statute of judgment unto you throughout your generations in all your dwellings. Whoso killeth any person, the murderer shall be put to death by the mouth of witnesses, but one witness shall not testify against any person to cause him to die. Moreover, ye shall take no satisfaction for the life of a murderer, which is guilty of death but he shall surely be put to death. Someone commits murder. That person is convicted only under the testimony of at least two witnesses. One witness is not enough. What's more, you cannot accept a sum of money, a fine, from a person who has committed murder. That person's penalty is death. He committed death, he shall die. He cannot buy his way out. You cannot impose a fine large enough to let him escape that penalty. And so the people came before their judges. The question was, how would they determine the amount of compensation to award an injured person? Here's a conflict. One individual has harmed another. How can a judge settle that? How will he decide on the amount of compensation to award to the innocent person? On the top of that, 
What degree of punishment shall be assigned? Here's a person who's caused $100,000 worth of damage to his neighbor, going to pay the $100,000. But then in addition to that, is there some punishment to be given to that person for having caused that damage or stolen that money? Very complicated thing. Back in the ancient Meta, uh, uh, Valley of Mesopotamia, there was a great conqueror named Hammurabi. Hammurabi wanted in his realm justice. Above all else, he wanted his people to be in an environment of fairness. He did something unusual. He had the laws of his realm written in stone. Not only were the laws written in stone, but the penalty for breaking those laws was also written on the stone. And that stone was displayed in a public place. Now people knew exactly what the crime was, and they knew exactly what the penalty was going to be. A great step in the right direction in that ancient day. In the early Roman Republic, there was no written law, and judges made up the law case by case. Everything depended on the judge's wisdom and his own sense of fairness. But after a while during that ancient republic, the laws of Rome were written, and those laws were written and published in the forum so that everybody could read them. School children were even required to memorize them a step in the right direction. Now before us, in the passage in Exodus 21, there is a general law being recognized. It might be referred to as a, as a law of retaliation. This person who's in a fight causes some, some injury. And here's the way that's supposed to be settled in, in kind. If the injured person loses an eye, the person who causes that loss shall also lose an eye. The same with a tooth, the same with a hand, the same with a foot, and so on. That seems to be the law that's being applied in that passage in Exodus chapter 21. In the book of Leviticus, chapter 24, verse 19, here's the law. If a man cause a blemish in his neighbor, as he hath done, so shall it be done to him. Breach for breach, eye for eye, tooth for tooth, as he hath caused a blemish in a man, so shall it be done to him again. There's that general law that the judges were to honor when they made decisions. Retribution, retaliation, repayment in kind. Deuteronomy chapter 19, verse 15. Moses' law said, One witness shall not rise up against a man for any iniquity or for any sin, if any sin that he sinneth, at the mouth of two witnesses, or at the mouth of three witnesses, shall the matter be established. If a false witness rise up against any man to testify against him that which is wrong, then both the men between whom the controversy is shall stand before the Lord, before the priests and the judges, which shall be in those days, and the judges shall make diligent inquisition, and behold, if the witness be a false witness, and hath testified falsely against his brother, then shall ye do unto him, as he thought to have done unto his brother. So shalt thou put evil away from among you. There's that law again, the general law, repayment in kind. Jesus made reference to that law in Matthew chapter 5, in the Sermon on the Mount, when he said at verse 20, verse 38, 
uh, verse uh, 37, verse 20, verse uh, 38. Ye have heard that it hath been said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. Well, there's reference to that law, that general law for settling disputes among people. Re repayment in kind, retaliation. If you've caused the loss of an eye, you pay with an eye. You've heard about that law. Well, surely they had in the law of Moses, but they'd misapplied it. Well, <clears throat> the Apostle Paul even made reference to this law over in the book of Colossians. Uh, of all things, uh, at the last verse in Colossians chapter 3, here's what uh, Paul wrote. But he that doeth wrong shall receive for the wrong which he hath done. You've done wrong, you're going to be paid in wrong. There is that general law of retaliation, eye for eye, tooth for tooth. And the judges in the nation of Israel were to be careful to honor that general law in the settlement of cases that came before them. The fellow loses an eye because the person who causes that loss of an eye must also lose an eye with this stipulation that for many such things as that, the person could redeem his eye. <clears throat> that is to say, instead of losing an eye in payment, he can pay a sum of money that's determined by the judge. That applied in many things, but not in murder. You could not buy your way out of murder. This is not for individuals. Individuals were not supposed to do that. That's the reason in Matthew 5, where we were reading a moment ago, Jesus went on to say, But I say unto you, that ye, resi ye resist not evil. Whatsoever, whosoever shall smite thee on thy right cheek, turn to him the other also. If a man sue thee at law and take away thy coat, let him have thy cloak also. Well, that's against the background of this judicial system. You do not take law into your own hands. This general law of an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth was not practiced by individuals. It was practiced through the court system. It was practiced through those appointed judges, those officials who could settle that matter legally. And Paul warned against doing that on an individual basis in Romans chapter 12 when he said, uh, beginning at verse 17, Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, neither give place unto wrath. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. It is not for individuals to take this law into their own hands. That's not the way it's supposed to be practiced. But in God's providence, we read about that law in practice many times in the Bible. In the book of Judges, the first chapter, the first few verses, there was a heathen king who had many, many times, as the result of battle, cut off the fingers and the toes of his victims. In payment for his crime, he had his own toes and his own fingers his thumbs cut off. That's an example of this eye for eye and tooth for tooth. Back in ancient Persia, a man named Haman wanted to kill all the Jews. He wanted especially to kill Mordecai, and he built a gallows on which he meant to hang that man. But the tables were turned. Haman was discovered as a criminal. And the king of Persia, Ahasuerus, said, Hang Haman on the gallows he prepared for Mordecai. There's an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. Exodus, Exodus chapter 33 and verse 1. 
Woe to thee that spoilest, and thou wast not spoiled, that dealest treacherously, and they dealt not treacher treacherously with thee. When thou shalt cease to spoil, thou shalt be spoiled. When thou shalt make an end to deal treacherously, they shall deal treacherously with thee. There again is the idea. Repayment in kind. An eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. Now, my friend, today, the law of Moses no longer is binding. That law of retaliation is not set up in the courts. However, we do have a judicial system, a civil government, and we're taught to honor and respect that civil government. Read the first few verses of Romans chapter 13. Those who sit on the judgment seat do so to punish evildoers. And as long as you live according to the laws, you have nothing to fear. So <clears throat> we one day will come before the judgment seat of Christ. We must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or evil. We shall stand before that judge. He'll be fair. He'll be just. And we shall receive exactly what we deserve. Thanks for that good uh, passage. Thank you for being our guest today. Until the next time, may the goodness of God be yours in full measure. You've been watching Dayspring. Dayspring is brought to you by your friends in local area churches of Christ. To request a free CD of today's lesson, you may contact us at Dayspring, Post Office Box 453, Tupelo, Mississippi, 38802-0453. There is no cost for this offer. You will not be asked for financial support. You can also phone your request toll-free at 1-866-842-4139. Or you can go to our website at dayspringtv.com. Thank you for visiting with us on Dayspring. May your joy be full. May the peace of God rule in your hearts. And may the light of Christ brighten heaven's way.